Hey Art Nerds, today we are putting the Artist Loft 126 piece mixed media set to the Nata Soup Studio Field Test. We're going to be making this adorable illustration that you saw just a moment ago. So for those of you who don't remember, I did an unbox and swatch video where I reviewed every item inside this 126 piece set. So we have watercolor pencils, we have color pencils, we have oils, we have acrylics, we have two watercolors, we have two mini palettes, we have a water well, we have an eraser, and we have a pencil sharpener, as you guys can see here, as well as an instructional booklet. We also have a fairly sturdily built case at least it's sturdily built compared ah Bowie has joined us sturdily built compared to the Hobby Lobby Masters Touch watercolor kit so I'm really looking forward to kind of exploring this kit with you guys today putting the materials inside this kit to the test and trying to answer the question of whether or not there are any good store kits out there you guys are just gonna have to watch all the way to the end to find out So we're going to begin this field test on Canson XL watercolor paper. This is a cellulose-based watercolor paper that is pretty accessible. They sell it everywhere from Walmart to Michaels to art supply stores. So I thought it would be a good affordable choice. This was also inked with a Sakura Pigma FB brush pin. Those are waterproof and alcohol marker proof pins. So the first thing I want to do is I want to erase the pencil marks underneath this inked illustration. And I have a scan of this inked illustration so I'm going to make that available to my wonderful patrons my art nerds I'm going to make that available over on Gumroad and link it down in the description below so my thoughts on this eraser is it's a white vinyl eraser it's a bit flimsy it's very dusty and it was consumed pretty quickly So here is our inked piece. I'm bringing out some of the swatches that I did from the prior video just to give you guys an idea of the materials included in this set. We have watercolor, we have oil pastels, we have color pencils, we have watercolor pencils, we have acrylics, and we have oil paints. For today's mixed media piece though, I'm going to focus mostly on the dry and wet media, so watercolor, color pencils, watercolor pencils, and maybe a little bit of acrylics. Now one of the first things I noticed while working on my mom's kitchen table is that this set when fully opened is really big. This is not a set that you're going to kind of want to pull from as you go. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull all the materials you need first like I'm doing with the watercolors here. I'm also going to use the watercolor brushes included in this set and only the brushes included in this set, not my own brushes, because I feel like this is going to give me a better ability to fully review this set. And this review was sponsored by wonderful, wonderful folks over on Twitter, over on the community tab of this channel, and over on my Patreon. I did a little bit of a fundraising campaign using my coffee so that I could purchase this set. It was a $30 set on sale that's originally around $64 and we were able to raise the $30 on Kofi, which I really appreciate because that allowed me to purchase and review this set without spending money out of pocket. So thank you guys so much for your support. A little bit of money here and there really goes a long way to helping me continue to do what I do here on this channel. We're also going to use the water well included. That's the kidney based kidney bean shaped object right there. We're going to use the two super tiny palettes they included as well as their brushes. And I'm not going to secure this watercolor piece down. So I am going to begin by applying my tube watercolor into our little palette. So you see I put some of the very cold yellow in there. And I'm adding a little bit of water because I want to mix up a little wash. Now these brushes are going to be the death of me because I can't mix up enough wash and I have to stop and remix. So the brushes and the palettes are just too small to be useful for me. However, we're going to make it work today. So you guys see I'm using the largest brush I have, the yellowish orange flat. And I'm applying my wash in brush strokes that kind of mimic the grass in the background. Thank you. 
Now, these sets are usually sold to parents, to grandparents, to aunts, to uncles, to guardians for younger artists. And I want to point out that it takes some experience to handle a cheap flat like this. A mop would have been a nice addition. And a larger flat palette like the sort that's used for acrylics would have been helpful. In some of my other reviews, I use a cheap white ceramic plate from Dollar Tree. I decided not to use this for this review because I wanted to keep it just the materials included in the set with the addition of my paper and my ink. The color doesn't really stretch very far and the color is kind of weak, so the two watercolors would be consumed really quickly. So now that I've finished applying my cool yellow, I'm using ultramarine blue. We only received one blue in the tube watercolors, and I'm adding a lot of watercolor using the flat brush, or a lot of color to it using the flat brush, and I'm trying to mix up a mix of blue. And I wanna use this wet into wet with the yellow and kind of have it softly diffuse. Now, when you're working with a cellulose paper like what I'm using here, it tends to dry out really quickly. It doesn't hold onto the water as long as a cotton rag paper would, but I did feel like a cellulose paper would be the closest to what people who are using this set for the first time, the intended audience of this set would be using. And it's a paper I'm actually pretty familiar with and I understand the working properties of it. I paint on Canson XL on occasion, so I know what it's capable of doing. So I'm still using that large flat brush and I'm brushing in using the side of the brush. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but I'm using the narrower side of the brush to brush in our ultramarine blue. Once that first layer started to dry, I went in with a much darker mix of ultramarine blue and I'm trying to add in some shadows in the foreground and behind Kara just to kind of create a sense of place and atmosphere with these paints. So I finished the grass for the background and that was done using a cool yellow plus ultramarine blue. I'm going to step away and allow this to dry before I continue working on the piece. While that was drying, I went ahead and I cleaned my palettes and I replaced the water in my small shallow kidney shaped bowl. 
I'm mixing up a mix of the same yellow with a little bit of that same ultramarine blue and I'm going to go ahead and paint that in for the leaf like shapes in the background. I wanted to see how well these two watercolors mix. For her skin, I'm mixing a little bit of the yellow ochre and the scarlet red together. And that's going to give us kind of a peachy skin tone color. So if you guys aren't familiar with my work, if you're new here to this channel, I am a comic artist and I draw the comic 7 Inch Kara. And it's about a tiny girl, this girl here named Kara, who is exploring the larger outside world and is seeking new friends and new experiences. And you guys can read the first volume for free at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com. And I'm currently working on prepping for the Kickstarter for volume 2, so I hope you guys will look forward to that. I'm also going to have links down in the description below for where you can buy this product, products I might recommend over this product, as well as other relevant videos. So, so to color in her skin tone, I'm using one of the smaller watercolor brushes. Now, all of the round watercolor brushes that were included in this Artist Loft kit have kind of snubbed tips. That means the tips had gotten damaged during transit and it kind of bent the tips over, which kind of renders them almost useless. It gives it a very coloring by number sort of feel. And I just wanted to tell you guys, if you're working with brushes like this, that is not not how watercolor is supposed to feel at all. And I highly recommend you save up and you invest in slightly better brushes. It really does make a big difference in how these paints handle. For the tops of her eyes, I'm applying just a little bit of watered down ultramarine blue to kind of create a shadow color. So this would be like the bangs coming over the front of her face. Now I also noticed that even though we're using a lot of paint from these tubes, the color is very, very faint. These really don't deliver a lot of color or a lot of pigment. So for her hair, I'm going to use the Burnt Sienna. And I'm just going to apply it in a thick mix almost directly. And I want to leave the highlight of her hair the white of the paper. And the brushes included in this Artist Loft kit make that really difficult to do because they never come to a fine point. They're always kind of a rounded point. So it's difficult to get in and do small areas. They also, because they are a very cheap synthetic, they're very prone to dripping all over the place. Now if you guys are looking for some higher quality watercolor tutorials if you're looking to actually learn how to watercolor I've got loads of great watercolor tutorials here on this channel and I'll link a few of them in the description below I also have a watercolor playlist which I'll link for you guys to check out so hopefully you could see the snubbed front on the brush right there. So for her skin, I want to begin layering the color, building up some depth, building up some contrast. And I have tutorials again here on this channel on how to build up contrast, how to do layering, and how to do glazing with watercolor. So if you're interested in learning more about how to actually paint and less about how this kit performs, again, check the description below. And I find that with the layers, they're very weak. It's difficult to really build up the kind of color you want to build up the kind of contrast or the kind of intensity you want. Now normally when I'm doing watercolor, I'll either remix the color or I'll let it evaporate over time so that we're dealing with less water.
So in general, I really love watercolor. It's my favorite medium and I find it really re relaxing. Right now I'm using a cooler, darker red to apply some blush and shadows on her cheeks, on her lips, on her elbows and underneath her neck. But with these brushes, this is kind of a painful situation for me. This is not fun. It's like color by number and it's difficult to get the paints and the brushes to do what I have in mind and to do what I want to do. I have a Twitter thread that I'll link down in the description where I actually compare inexpensive watercolors like these and the kind of art you can make with these to what you can achieve with more expensive watercolors. So I hope you guys will check that thread out. I think it's really useful and I think it's a good argument for why you should always try to invest in the best that you can afford at the time. And a lot of people try to make the argument that investing in art supplies for kids is a waste of money because they'll change their minds and they'll get bored, etc, etc, etc. And yes, that can be true. But some many kids maintain the same interests over years. There are kids who have taken rec ball from the age of five until high school when they're playing for the team and they're trying to do it professionally. I started drawing comics at 13 and I've done it every day ever since. So don't let age be a reason to negate somebody's passion or interest. If someone is genuinely interested in doing something, investing in small ways, even if it's just your support, your encouragement, and caring about what they do can make a big difference. If my parents hadn't been supportive of my interest in art when I was growing up and bought me the best that they could afford, then I I wouldn't be doing it now. And honestly, the best my parents could afford was Crayola because that's what we had. But I knew my mom really wanted to see me pursue this. She really wanted to see me improve and she was supportive of my passions. And that's one of the reasons I still make art to this day. So you don't have to spend a fortune on art supplies to give a truly valuable art gift to a young artist. The fact that you're interested and the fact that you care is a big part of that gift. However, I don't want to see you guys waste your money and that's why I'm reviewing this product today. So this is where I kind of stopped off. I allowed this piece to dry overnight. I allowed the watercolors to dry overnight and I came back to it the next morning with a clean water pot. And what you guys see me doing is I'm reactivating the colors. Now, when I'm painting with professional grade watercolors like Windsor, Newton, and Core, reactivating watercolors is part of my process. I do it all the time and I don't have any problems. So I wanted to put the Artist Loft tube watercolors to the test as well. So as I'm painting this, I, my frustration levels are building. I kind of kind of touched on that earlier. I find these watercolor brushes to be awful. I hate them and I hate that they're snubbed. There's no reason for them to have gotten damaged in the package. I find these brushes are almost impossible to use and I wish kits like this would stop including garbage brushes and cut the cost elsewhere, like on the box. The box is really nice, but there's no reason for us to have such a nice watercolor brush. Now these brushes are, I'm sorry, such a nice watercolor box. We need nicer brushes, not so nice a box. I'm finding that you really can't layer with these watercolors. I also find that these watercolors are kind of sticky, like the Master's Touch. Maybe they're using the same sort of binder, that Dextrin binder. And the colors are not vibrant, clean, or lively. The whole painting feels a bit dead. Reeves and Cotman are both better choices. Prang and Yarka are more vibrant and layer better, and all of them are very affordable watercolors. Also, these paints really smell. They stink. I'm painting in my mom's kitchen, and every time somebody came into her kitchen, they would complain about the smell. These have a really strong, nasty, sickly, sweet smell. So if you're sensitive to strong scents, these are going to be awful for you. I also find that these dry opaque, muddy, and flat. They're just really unimpressive watercolors.
So once I finished using the two watercolors and they had a chance to dry, I decided to go ahead and put them away and move on to our next art supply. So generally when I'm doing watercolor pieces, I will use watercolor pencils and color pencils to add details. And you guys can see that in many, many, many other watercolor tutorials, but it's particularly apparent in the 7-inch Kara comic page tutorials that I've shared on this channel. So these are the Artist Loft watercolor pencils. You can tell they're watercolor pencils because they have kind of the ruby red back. And using the box open, it takes up so much space on the table. That's why we're so pulled out and that's why everything's kind of moved over to the side. And I feel like this box would be really hard to use in a limited space situation. The watercolor pencil tray is not removable, so just taking it out of the box was not really an option. I also found that the color pencils in this set are really weak over the watercolor. Dry, you don't get a whole lot of color. Wet, you get no color at all. In fact, they disappear when they're activated with water and some of them won't even layer over the watercolor. This is really frustrating for me because I really like using watercolor pencils to add depth and dimension, to add further details to my watercolor illustrations. And I was really hoping that I could rely on the watercolor pencils in this set for that purpose. So while I still had my watercolor supplies out, I wanted to switch back and add some more details using the dried tube watercolors. So that's what I'm doing here, just using one of the synthetic brushes in the kit. Now I found that the orange brushes are the slightly softer brushes, which is why I'm using them for watercolor. I assume Artist Loft included these to be used for watercolor, but that informational packet that they included doesn't really explain the difference between orange and white nylon. So I'll do that for you guys. Orange nylon or orange tacklon is usually used for really cheap synthetic watercolor brushes. It doesn't have to be the worst. Princeton Snap synthetic brushes use orange tacklon and they're fine. It's very snappy. It has a lot of uh, elasticity to it. It can be really good for drawing very tight details, but the brush itself doesn't hold a lot of paint. It doesn't hold a lot of water. It tends to be drippy and it doesn't necessarily give you very expressive brush strokes because it's very stiff. It's also very prone to scraping prior layers off the page. Whereas white tacklon is even stiffer than that and it's usually used for uh, acrylics or for oils as a softer brush for those stiffer sort of medium. So once that had a chance to dry, I'm going back in with the watercolor pencil just to kind of add some more details. I'm trying to use a dark blue pencil like I would use an indigo pencil to add shading to the figure. And then I wanted to add some white highlights because I felt like that would add additional contrast and make things pop. Unfortunately, that white watercolor pencil basically doesn't work at all. So since I had so many problems with the watercolor pencils, I'm flipping the box over and we're gonna work with the color pencils instead. So generally when I'm working on watercolor illustrations, I prefer to use watercolor pencils at this point to add details. But in the past, I used to use a lot of different types of color pencils to add the sort of details that I was looking for. So I do have some experience with color pencils. Unfortunately, these color pencils don't layer well either. Basically, if you're struggling with the colors in the tubes or the color pencils, the I mean, in the tubes or the watercolor pencils, the to, wow, I'm so sorry, I can't talk. If you're struggling with the color selection in the watercolor pencils or the tube watercolors, the color pencils are not gonna offer you better colors because I think they're all using the same pigments. So at this stage, I would usually add white highlights using white gouache or Dr. P.H. Martin's opaque white. I don't have those, so I'm using the white acrylic in this set. And I found that they don't integrate well with water, which is unusual because acrylics are a water slash acrylic based medium that you should be able to thin out with water. And even the white is transparent, which was hugely frustrating for me. Of any color that should not be transparent, white is the color that should not be transparent. It's just the color of the paper, y'all. So. I was hoping the acrylic tubes would work okay for adding white highlights to her hair, to her eyes, to the background, but they didn't. 
the white acrylic really had to be glopped on. So everything in this set was pretty awful, all in unique, depressing ways. I really struggled to get the kind of colors that I wanted with the tube watercolor. I struggled to get the intensity that I wanted with the tube watercolor. I struggled to layer colors with the tube watercolor. So I introduced the color pencils and I really struggled with the same problems with the color pencils and they wouldn't even show up over the watercolor. So I switched to the color pencils and had the exact same problems. They basically didn't show up at all. I decided to just kind of hedge my bets and start doing some white highlights using the white acrylic and that didn't work either. So this set is being sold as a mixed media set. It certainly does include a variety of media. It includes watercolor pencils, color pencils, oils. It includes oil pastels. It includes tube watercolors and it includes acrylics. It includes two palettes six different brushes, a water well, an eraser, and a sharpener. And unfortunately, of all the things included in this set, the eraser was the best thing. It performed the best. This set does not play well as a mixed media set, and it was a huge disappointment. I don't blame people who purchased this set. They just want to give the gift of art supplies. They want to encourage other artists to make art. I blame Artist Loft, I blame Michaels, and I blame any company that makes subpar kits to sell to people who don't really know much about art supplies to make a quick buck and to take advantage. You guys need to do better, and I am going to continue to call you guys out on it when you fail, because I think parents, I think guardians, grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends deserve to know that their money isn't necessarily being put to good use, that you're kind of taking advantage of them. I'm here to help you guys out. I want to have your back as an artist and as an art educator. I want to look out for you guys. So I would highly recommend you skip the 126 piece mixed media set from Artist Law. I would also highly recommend you skip any kits that include these materials in them um, made by Artist Loft. I would recommend you also skip any Artist Loft kits that have those little cake style watercolors that are like dried chalk. You want to look for half pans with like slightly glossy dome tops on them. And if you guys ever need help shopping for art supplies, I have loads of great art supply gift guides over on the blog here on this channel. And I'm also happy to curate a selection for you guys if you email me at becca.hilburn at gmail.com. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you can shop with a bit more confidence. So if you guys check the description below, I have some affordable art supplies that I think are better performers than what's included in this set. But I want to go over just a few of them before we say goodbye. I feel like the Sakura Koi half pan set, I know it's hit or miss for some people. I really like it. I would recommend that over the watercolors in this set. I've painted with those different Sakura Koi half pan sets over the years. I've had several of them. I use them for my convention watercolors. I really like them. I have tutorials on this channel on how to use them. If you're looking to buy watercolor pencils, watercolor pencils are so inexpensive that I would actually recommend you just go ahead and get some nicer ones. Super Color 2 by Karen Dosh are quite nice and Derwent's Ink Tense watercolor pencils are excellent. If you're looking for decent watercolor brushes, Cotman makes good watercolor color brushes that are synthetic and they're very affordable. You can also try the Mimic brand by Jerry's Artorama. It's like Creative Mark Mimic. They're available in black synthetic and a, like a Kalinske Sable-esque synthetic. Those are good. Princeton also makes the Princeton Snap synthetic brushes. But basically anything Princeton makes is going to be pretty good, particularly with their synthetics. So you can't really go wrong with that. So I wanted to kind of break up the illustration just a little bit. So I masked Kara off just using a piece of paper towel and I flicked some white acrylic into the background just to kind of li liven things up, loosen things up. That's a trick I do pretty frequently because my art tends to get kind of stiff and stagnant. So for the color pencils, Faber-Castell makes their red line color pencils. Those are pretty good. Those are going to be better than the color pencils in here. Uh, Crayola has a signature line of color pencils that are better than these. I would actually say avoid Prismacolor. Prismacolor is overpriced for what it delivers. They tend to be very waxy and very prone to snapping. 
Personally, I'm not a big acrylics person, but I will say for the oil pastels, Sakura Craypaws are much nicer than these oil pastels. And if you're looking for good tube watercolors, I would actually recommend getting a smaller, more affordable set from like Winsor Newton and Daniel Smith and augmenting as you go along. I do have lots of watercolor reviews here on this channel and I'm always happy to make curated recommendations to help you find something that will suit your needs or the needs of someone you're buying for. If you're looking for a very easy to use half pan set, the Moz Art Coma Rebi set is excellent. So we have some close-ups here just to kind of give you an idea of how the watercolor itself handled. I do want you guys to check out the Twitter thread I'm going to link in the description below comparing expensive watercolors to cheap watercolors. I think that will give you guys a better idea of just how poorly these handled. And I also want you guys to keep in mind that I've been doing this kind of watercolor illustration for 10 plus years. I have a lot of experience and I know how to get the best out of inexpensive art supplies. But someone you're buying for may not have that experience to draw on so I really recommend getting something a little bit nicer that they're actually going to enjoy I really wish Michaels hired more staff people who could actually talk to customers and explain things to customers because when I was buying this set I helped a couple of dads buy for their daughters because there was just nobody around so Michaels and artist loft I'd really like to see you step it up but take this as a reason to go to a physical art supply store like David's Art Center in New Orleans or Plaza Art or Dick Blick because they're going to have staff on hand who are knowledgeable about art supplies and who are happy to help you out. They're happy to answer your questions. So that's why I would recommend skip the arts and crafts stores and go to an art store. It's going to be cheaper than what Michaels is actually able to offer and it's going to have staff that can help you out. So I want to thank you guys so, so much for joining me today. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know. Consider joining me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup or just give me a one-time tip over on coffee at ko-fi.com slash natosoup. Your support, both emotional and financial, helps me to continue to create videos like this. If you ever want to just chat about art supplies and get the inside scoop, you can join me on my Discord server, The Paint Box. I'll have a link down in the description below as well. Or you can chat with me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash natosoup. If you want to check out my art, you can check that out at instagram.com slash natosoup. And you can read 7inch Kara for free at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com. Even though these art supplies made me miserable, I had a great time recording this for you guys. And I hope you guys can tell that from the sound of my voice. It was wonderful to hang out with you guys again. And I hope to see you guys again really soon. Please check out some of the other watercolor tutorials that I've linked down in the description below. Have a wonderful day guys. Bye!